My name is Jaden. I'm Eli. I'm Jason. I'm Caden. And we got the Yahoo and Tweet channel. And we thank you very much for hanging out with us. Our family is your family. Your family is our family. And we truly are blessed by each and every one of you guys out there. And we really appreciate hearing from you guys in the comments. We appreciate hearing from you guys at all, all the times on this. And um, we are simply a little family out in the middle of a jungle <laughs> that is trying to find our way forward to the kingdom. And it is by... Us diligently attempting to search the scriptures that we have found that the laws, statutes, and commandments that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are an imperative guide to life. In fact, they are probably the key to life. And when you find them, you understand exactly what I'm saying. And when you don't have them and you don't know them, then what I'm saying is going to sound really, really strange. Because most people have been taught in the Christian religion that we are... We don't have any laws. The laws are for the old folks that are gone and they just, they don't apply to us. And when you actually read the scriptures for yourself, that isn't what they say at all. In fact, it is quite opposite of that. In fact, the entire premise from Genesis all the way to Revelation is about keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments and having the faith of our Messiah, Jesus the Christ, Yahushua HaMashiach. Um, his Hebrew name was 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 Yahushua, or some say Yeshua, Yeshua. Um, there's a lot of different ways of saying it, but the, one of the meanings of Yeshua means salvation. When you look at the name Jesus, the name doesn't mean anything. It was thrown in there years later, and so if you want a proper introduction to the Son of the Most High, Yahuwah, his name is Yahushua. So as we are continuing on, we are reading out of the book of Hosea, and one thing I found this morning I thought is um, is decent to go over uh, are, are some of these things. It says, who is God to you? And for anyone who doesn't know, God is kind of a, a it's a pagan term. It's, it's more of a surtitle than anything. It's not the name of our creator. They went out and they replaced the name of our creator thousands of times in scriptures. And between the 1611 King James and prior to that, it was it's it's not God. His name is Yahuwah, yad He wav He. And there, there's literally four letters. Some people put a V instead of a W at the end of it. But it's closer than God. And it is a, this is, this is something, um, well, I guess for all of you guys, this would probably relate to everybody out there. So who is God to you? From Psalms 103.3, he is my healer. Isaiah 59 says he's my redeemer. Psalms 70, he's my deliverer. Psalms 43, he is my strength. Joel 3, he is my shelter. John 15, he is my friend. 1 John 2, he's my advocate. He is my restorer, Psalms 23. He's my everlasting father, Isaiah 9. He is love, 1 John 4. He is my mediator, 1 Timothy 2. He is my stronghold, Nahum 1 7. He is the bread of life, John 6. He is my hiding place, Psalms 32. He is the everlasting light, Isaiah 60. He is a strong tower, Proverbs 18. He is my resting place, Jeremiah 50. He is my strength and spirit of truth, John 16. He is my refuge from the storm, Isaiah 25. He is eternal life, 1 John 5. He is the Lord who provides, Genesis 22. He is the Lord of peace, 2 Thessalonians. He is the living water, John 4. He is my shield, Psalms 144. He is my husband. Isaiah 54. He is my helper. Hebrews 13. He is my wonderful counselor. Isaiah 9, 6. He is the Lord who heals. Exodus 15. He is my hope. All right, guys, when you guys hear this, what do you guys think? What, do you, what, do you, what did you guys just think on this? You guys have not seen this. I just kind of read this out of there. Give me your first uh, thoughts. I mean, yeah, who has all those things to everyone? He can be any of those things. He can be someone who saves you. He can be someone who takes care of you. He is all of those things at the same time. It sounds like a complete package, right? Healer, redeemer, deliverer, strength, shelter, friend, advocate, restore, right? Everlasting father, love, mediator, stronghold, bread of life, hiding place, everlasting light, strong tower. Like you wouldn't want a leader who was a, uh, not a healer, not a redeemer, not a deliverer. Everything that we need has been provided for us by our Elohim. And so as we are going through this book of Hosea, um, what we're talking about in the book of Hosea, for anybody that's just jumping in on this, 
What we're talking about is we're talking about this little tiny span between here, between King Solomon and King David, where all of the Nebium, the prophets, came and told everybody in the northern ten tribes of Yisrael that they needed to repent. And if they don't repent, they're going to go into captivity. Now, for those who understand scriptures, most know that those of the northern kingdom were never, ever returned. They were never, ever returned. And so I believe that most of us today are these northern tribes. And the end of times is that our creator is going to gather the scattered sheep that are from the, the, the four, four ends of the earth. And we're going to be gathered together under an umbrella of our Messiah. There's going to be a exodus. There's going to be a second exodus, just like our first exodus. It's going to be something extremely supernatural, just like the very first exodus. And it's going to be something that is amazing. And we, you won't get this, the, the, the so-called rapture of the church. There's not going to be any churches that are raptured. If you look at modern day churches, they're all demonic. They're all satanic. All of these first day churches that you see on every corner of every street of every town, they're all demonic because they go against the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator. If there was a single church that ever said that we need to obey the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator, and we, you, you have the faith of Messiah Yahushua, that would be a church to join. But there are no churches out there. There's 50,000 different denominations of Christianity, and every single one of them are they're, they're not going true north. They're going off. And so here we are, all of us, in captivity right now. And as we've been reading through Hosea, the prophecies of Hosea don't just, pro, don't, they're not just prophesying the destruction of the northern tribes of Israel back in the days, back before 721 BC, but it's telling us the future of our exodus and the future that's going to be here. So with that, gentlemen, are you guys ready to roll? Yep. All right. Everyone good? Yep. All right. You guys get some sleep? Yep. yep. All right. So, guys, for anybody who doesn't know, these are the scriptures of Yah. These are probably the greatest translation of scriptures that have ever been released anywhere. They're absolutely free of charge. There's a description below. In, there's the, the download description below in the bottom. You will never, ever get charged for these. Um, all the PDFs are completely free. And there is also an apocrypha that has 37 hidden books that is um, available at the same below at the links. And so... Um, I guess that didn't take me there. I did a bookmark this morning, but it didn't take me there. So let me run into Jose real quick here. All right. So we're heading into Jose and we're, we're at chapter eight today is what we are in. All right. Jim, fill me in with something good. You got any jokes you like? No. All right. Well, that's not good. All right. Do a little Jose recap. Yeah. Do a little Jose recap before we go. Um, so we started off with uh, him marrying um, basically prostitutes and whores and uh, by his own uh, by his own. It wasn't his own choice, right? He had to go do it so he could prove you know, could prove to the people what it feels like every time you show sin against him. Every time they start doing idol worship or doing some adultery or sinning against the Torah, and then uh, basically talks about how he is going to crush them, how he they are going to be uh, weakened, and then he, at some point he will bring them back. Yeah, and in the second chapter, um, the, he has to marry a friend, or he has to go hook up with a friend, and the friend is, a, is also some sort of a, a adulteress or something. Some something is really funny, and the the thing about being a prophet of our Creator is sometimes things are a little weird. Um, what prophet had to lay naked for three hundred days? Who was that? You guys remember that? Uh, was that it? Ezekiel? I want to say it was Elijah. Yeah, I want to say it was, it was Elijah. Like one of the How could we forget that? We just Elias. read. We just read these books four times yeah, I, I in a year. I think it was Elijah. Yeah. So there's there's something about the prophets that you know it's 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 good to be a prophet of our Creator, but it's sometimes not good to be having to deliver these messages sometimes because you become the example. I have to explain what it's like. Exactly. And when you're having to marry a whore that's cheating on you, that's wrecking your life, and doing all that simply as an example of. What our disobedience does to our creator, and it makes him angry, and it, he is a husband to us. We are to be faithful, loyal wives, I suppose, or whatever you want to call it. We are suppo it's supposed to be his, his mate, and when we are chowing down on our pork chops and bacon and putting the laws of God on the cross and worshiping uh, Nimrod's phallus on, on uh, Christmas, then hanging out with the uh, fertility bunnies on Easter... And calling it all, thinking that we are God's chosen people, we, we absolutely are not. God's chosen people are people that are separate. 
You don't look like the world, smell like the world, taste like the world, or have anything to do with this world. And yes, we all have to walk around in this world. We're all stuck in captivity in a world of pagans and heathens all around us, Gentiles. But you don't want to be a Gentile. A Gentile simply means somebody who's not in covenant with our creator. You want to be in Israel Gentile. You want to be somebody who's coming out of Gentile world and you want to be a Hebrew. You want to be a, a Hebrew Gentile or that's what you would be called at the end. You'd be something else. You, you don't want to be called a Gentile. And so here is chapter eight of Hosea. And again, these are the words of Hosea to the 10 northern tribes prior to captivity and also to you today. Okay, eight. Put the ram's horn to your mouth like an eagle against the house of Yahuwah because they have transgressed my covenant and they have rebelled against my Torah. Now, the question for anybody out there today is this you, right? This message is for the house of, uh, against the house of Yahuwah because they've transgressed the covenant. They have rebelled against my Torah. If you guys are living a Torah-less life, if you guys live a life that you don't care about the law, statutes, and commands of our Creator, this is for you. They cry out to me, my Elohim, we, Yisrael, know you. And that's what all the Christians will say. Every Christian will say, oh, we know God. We know the Jesus. We know Jesus really well. And in, my, in his name, we cast out demons. And in his name, we do many, many wonderful things, right? That's what the Christians say. And that's, if that's what you say and that you don't need the Torah, remember Matthew 7 says, those who are Torah-less depart from our Messiah. Yisrael 3 has rejected what is good. An enemy pursues him. They have made sovereigns, but not from me. They have made rulers, and I have not known. From their silver and gold, they made idols for themselves, so that they are cut off. Oh, Shomeron, your calf has been cast off. My wrath has burned against them. How long shall they be incapable of innocence? For from Yisrael is even this. A workman made it, and it is not Elohim. For the calf of Shomeron is splinters. For they sow the wind and reap the whirlwind. The stock has no bud. It yields no grain. It, if it yields, strangers swallowed up. Yisrael has been swallowed up. They have now become among the nations as a vessel in which there is no pleasure. Okay, where is the northern tribes of Yisrael today? Scattered among the world. Spread out against the nations. You know, there is no other tribe, there's no other people in the Bible that are called sheep. Whenever you hear about these scattered sheep or the lost sheep or the sheep, it's talking about you. It's talking about us. It's talking about the northern tribes of Yisrael. It's talking about Yisrael as a whole. Nine. For they themselves have gone up to Asher, a wild donkey alone by itself is Ephraim. They have hired lovers. Although they sold themselves among the nations, this time I shall gather them. When they have suffered for a while from the burden of a sovereign, of rulers. Since Ephraim has, has made many altars for sin, they have been altars for sinning to him. I have written for him numerous matters of my Torah. They were regarded as strange. And that's the thing, is if you guys hear the word Torah and it sounds strange to you, that's a problem. You don't want, to, you don't want the Torah to sound strange for you. 13, as for my offerings, they slaughter flesh and they eat. Yahuwah shall not accept them. Now he remembers their wickedness and punishes their sins. Let them return to Mitzrayim. For Yisrael has forgotten his maker and has built places. And Yahuda, what did I say? Places. Mm -hmm. Palaces. Oh, sorry. Does it say palaces? Palaces. Yeah. Palaces. Sorry. My bad. Yeah, we're, we're a bunch of scripture editors here. So, <laughs> thanks guys. For Yisrael has forgotten his maker and has built palaces. And Yahudah has increased walled cities. But I shall send fire upon his cities and it shall devour his strongholds. All right, folks. This is our message. Our message to you guys is that the laws, statutes, and commandments found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy are the guides to life. That is what the kingdom is based upon. Now, you can't have Messiah Yahushua, Jesus the Christ, without the Torah. The Torah without Messiah Yahushua doesn't make a lot of sense. Why does it make a lot of sense? Because if you want to follow the Torah of Moshe, then you need a Levitical priesthood. 
We don't have a Levitical priesthood. You don't have sacrifices. You're living in sin. But if you do have Messiah Yahushua, that is our blood-bought Messiah who came and was tortured to death for our sins. Not so that we can continue on in sins, striping Messiah more and more. Every time you sin, you're adding more than 39 stripes to our back of our Messiah. Because he did not come so that you could live in sin, so that we could live in our worldly pleasure, so that we could have our best life now. He came so that he could break the curse of the Torah, so that we could walk with our creator and walk with his son and walk in that kingdom and have a world outside of this little tiny 120 years that we're all going to be in this measly small time frame. Eternity is forever, folks. And this is the time that you guys can put your lives into Yah's life. Seek his heart, seek his mind, seek his soul, seek everything about him, and you'll find it in the Torah. And with that, guys, we hope that you guys have a wonderful day. We love you guys, and we will see you again later. All right, shalom. shalom.